Hi, everyone. My name is Helen Casa, and I am a black woman. More specifically, I am an Ethiopian woman. I am also a first-generation American. My dad immigrated here in the mid-'80s, and my mom, the early-'90s. As you can imagine, growing up in a foreign home is very different from the homes of the typical American family. So different that during my elementary and middle school years, I allowed something horrible to happen to me. I allowed myself to be socialized by the world around me. I was socialized to feel discomfort with the black wrapped around my body. I was socialized to feel hate for my puffy, curly, thick hair. I was socialized to feel discomfort and shame for being of Ethiopian descent. I let that happen to me. And unfortunately, so do many women and people of color. Unknowingly, I traded myself for cultural norms. I traded my race and dignity for friends that never had any actual interest in me or respect for my culture. It took me some time to discover the importance of a sense of existence. We must live our lives with the knowledge that our existence is influential. We must understand the relevance of our existence and we decide how we are perceived. I personally perceive myself as a young black woman. I classify myself as a leader and a passionate one. Because I see myself in such a light, it forces my peers to see me as an individual. It forces my peers to acknowledge my accomplishments and achievements and my potential. I found my inner black woman. Before I get into that, let me just say that my perception of myself is generally viewed as a dangerous mix and even a threat to society. Yes, I did say that my identity is seen as dangerous and a threat. In the eyes of some and in the subconscious minds of many, I am only allowed a few pre-prepared self-classification packages. Package A, two physical characteristics and the opportunity to be invisible. So an example of this would be the in, an invisible black woman. I get the opportunity to live undisturbed, and as long as I don't cause any trouble, just you know, be quiet and sit in the back of the class and just try to get into college. Package B, two physical characteristics, a positive adjective, and a negative adjective. So I can be an angry or bitchy independent black woman or an over-aggressive, driven young woman. It's kind of a shame how relevant these topics are. And package C, anything I want to be with a storm of problems to follow suit. That's the most you know, diva picture of myself I could find. <laughs> so this means that I can be the independent, kind, diplomatic black woman with a passion for social justice and education and equality but let it be known that I won't get the support from the general public due to the agents of socialization. Institutions and media mainly have socialized people to think that people like me should be punished rather than celebrated. For example, in my AP literature and history classes, I tend to be the only African-American female in class in a room full of Asian and Caucasian students. So, as expected, my perspective view and opinion is going to come from a different angle. However, that is not welcomed in many of my classes. Students tend to tune themselves out or roll their eyes or dismiss my real world applications, comments, and simple opinion if it isn't just straight out of the material that we read. I believe that Socratic seminars and class discussions are designed with the purpose of creating opportunity for students to express their intellectual vitality not to just summarize or rephrase what the literature said or what one of your peers said. For example, in my AP government class, two out of 11 girls speak voluntarily, including myself, while 11 out of 16 boys dominate the conversation. I'm sure that isn't a surprise to many of you because I'm sure that you have all experienced this in your classrooms. But the question I ask, is have any of you stopped to observe your classroom and done anything about it? If you saw one of your female peers speak and completely get disregarded, would you interrupt and bring light to her comment? 
If you saw someone discredit the words of one of your black peers in a class discussion due to a lack of ethos, would you interrupt and say, why wouldn't that be correct? How are statistics wrong? These packages may not be bluntly put out there for us to go to the store and purchase, but they are strongly suggested in our day-to-day -day experiences. Okay, <laughs> it is key to understand that our experiences are not unique to us as individuals, but rather they are unique to people that look like us. Sometimes it is really important to kind of look at yourself from an observational view and say, it's okay. Well, for me, I've looked at myself and I've said, I am a black woman. I do get mad at times. I do get mad at times, and I am opinionated. I am independent, and I am fun and have a sense of humor. I am a feminist, but not a perfect one. I would consider myself academic and educated. I am insecure at times, but I always stand for myself and not seesaw with the purpose of pleasing others. I am quiet when I'm learning and loud when I am leading. That is what I have discovered so far in my 16 years of existence. For the first half, as I mentioned before, I was the girl who stayed quiet and let people say what they wanted to say, whether it was nice or mean, because I was never taught at a young age how to defend myself, because it was unladylike to stand up for ourselves. Girls are trained at a young age to please others, to compromise more in relationships with their partners and peers, and girls are overall trained to see that it's better to be seen and not heard. Girls are told that when a boy is mean, it translates to that he likes you, which tra trains girls to tolerate disrespect. This goes for people of color as well, in the sense that if you are Asian and don't have all A's, people see you as a bad Asian or the odd one out. Or if you're black, nerdy, and into anime and don't play sports, you're seen as not black. A big part of the bridge is that models are nowhere to be found. At a young age, who is there to look at if you are a first-generation Ethiopian girl in San Jose? The white community here in San Jose makes up 28.7% of the population. The Asian community makes about 32%, and blacks, 3.2%. Whites are seen as independent, they are seen as individuals, there isn't a box to put them in. White boys really do have the upper hand in the sense that they see their reflection everywhere and will fit in anywhere, in particularly every environment. Whereas black women aren't reflected by media and overall do not appear in masses in tech companies or in CEO leadership positions, and etc. In fact, that is true for women and all women in general. Subconscious gender roles, and, raci and the racial roles exist. They create limitation on an individual's idea of self-potential. Gender and race go hand in hand. They're essentially the same. Being a woman or person of color is not a handicap. It simply translates to that there is a reality, that, we, there, that the reality that we are born into is not the reality that is destined for us. Women, people of color, and people of various sexual orientations must stay conscious and woke at all times and be their own example. Do not let your mind go on to pilot is the message I'm trying to say. So I used to often ask myself growing up, who would I be if my education was in the hands of a strong, independent black woman? What would it be like to be in a classroom surrounded by people that looked like me? What would my writing voice sound like? And most importantly, how would I feel about myself? So rather than moping and wishing I had a teacher that could relate to me, I said, nobody is as similar as myself as myself. So I became my own independent black woman or teacher. <laughs> Do you think it made a difference? Are you able to feel my sense of pride? Do you hear the confidence in my diction? Did you notice my understanding of the black woman's role in history? Did you notice my sense of pride in my Ethiopian heritage? Do you notice me? Or do I still just blend into the background? Am I relevant now? Do my words have any value to you? 
Is it because I know myself that you are all listening to me right now? Or are you listening to me because I'm on TED and that gives me ethos? Would you listen to me if I was just the girl sitting behind you in class? Maybe so, maybe not. I found myself by bringing out my inner black woman. Now I say black woman, not because I am one, but because of what the black woman symbolizes. Black woman truly symbolize strength, self-love, cultural pride, authority, assertiveness, and confidence. I feel that every girl of every color needs to bring out their inner strong black woman. Too, too many times in my classes, I have heard girls, intelligent girls, raise their hands kind of shaky and immediately start off their phrasing with, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if this is right, but is it maybe dot, 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 rather than, well, I think that the answer could possibly be. And the truth is, these things are not rude. These things are actually necessary. Rather, things, tone matters. Being articulate matters. These are the skills that we need to be known for. The cross between gender and race, it's simple. Be aware of the terms generally used to describe people like you. Emphasize the positive and change the negative. Because you know what? Men are not entitled to all positions of leadership. Women have every right to power. Men are not entitled to higher pay because girls work just as hard. So why do we allow gender roles to define limits? Why do we allow racial stereotypes to overcome? Race has no dominant. To be melanated or not to be, regardless under the flesh, we are all the same. In moments of weakness, and I say weakness loosely, if public speaking is your fear, for example, then bring out your inner Beyonce, Olivia Pope, Annalise Keating, Rihanna, Michelle Obama, or whoever. Take out your strongest weapon and do not allow microaggressions to silence you. So please, given what I have said, I think we should end this talk with a little bit of noise. So I just kind of want to get a feel of who's here in the audience. Can I get an applause if Beyonce is in the house? Can I get an applause for Miss, and Miss Maya Angelou if she is in the house? Can I get an applause if the First Lady Michelle Obama is in the his house? <laughs> this, is, this one is in black, but yo, Hillary Clinton, you in here? <laughs> I take this from one of my favorite songs by Beyonce called Grown Woman. She said in her chorus, and no, I will not sing it. <laughs> I am a grown woman. I can do whatever I want. They love the way I walk, because I walk with a vengeance. They listen to me when I talk, because they know I ain't pretending. It took a while, but I understand just where I'm going. I know the world, and I know who I am. It's about time I show it. Now that girl, she can get whatever she wants. Thank you.